Hey guys, so I got a question about how I would deploy Prisma to Heroku. And now I actually don't really know how to do this. Well, I know how to do about half of it. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So the part that I do know how to deploy is this part right here. And that's the TypeScript server or JavaScript server, whichever one you pick, uh, that you actually write yourself and that uses GraphQL Yoga. So how you do that is um, a few steps. So I just made a few changes to the default template. And the template that I'm using is the TypeScript basic template. So the things that I changed was first the port that it runs on. So when using Heroku, it passes the port as an environment variable. So I grab it from the uh, process environment. Um, otherwise, if it's not passed, for example, for in development mode, I just use the string 4000. Um, the other thing is in the package.json. Since we're using TypeScript, we want to compile our code after uh, basically it's installed. So I added a post install script. And what this does is it gets automatically called after someone npm installs uh, our package. So when Heroku takes our code, it's going to npm install it, and then it's going to run this post install script, which will compile our code using the TypeScript compiler. And then according to our TS config, this will generate a dist uh, folder. So we also set up a proc file that starts up the server, so web. Um, and then we just call node and we do it on the dist slash index.js. And we know it's called dist because our TS config and then index.js um, is how we start up our server. Um, and so that is the setup. And so this is actually really easy to deploy to Heroku. So after logging into Heroku, um, and if you don't know how to log into Heroku, there is a CLI that you can install that's very nice. Uh, I recommend grabbing that because it makes it really easy to deploy applications. Um, you just want to do Heroku login, so I've already done that. Um, and then you're just going to do Heroku create. And what it'll do is it'll create an application for you. So here is the URL of my application. And you want to make sure that you are using git and that you have uh, your code committed and whatnot because all you do is you do git push heroku master and you push up your code to heroku um, and then what heroku is going to do is take your source code and you can see it all happening right here um, it looks at it it sees looks at the proc file and it sees that we have package.json it knows we have a node application so it installs all the, the dependencies and we can see that right here so it's doing a yarn install and then after those are uh, finished being installed, it's going to use our post install, and then our Heroku app is going to be up and running. And it'll have a URL that we can actually access, which we'll see in just a moment. All right, so it finished doing all the things that it needed to do. So we have our URL here that I can just click on, and we can see it'll open up. And it actually does open up GraphQL Playground. We can check out the schema. Um, and it has what we have set up. So I can do drafts and I can actually do a request if I want to, because there is some data in the database because it does go ahead and seed it. And we go in and grab it and we see we actually can grab data. So you might be thinking, hey, Ben, it looks like it actually did work and you did just deploy this to Heroku, but I actually only deployed one part of it. See, that's the tricky part of uh, deploying something with Prisma. There's three parts. There's our server, which I did just deploy to Heroku. Then there's Prisma server, and then there's the database. So if we take a look at my um, index.js or TypeScript file, we'll see that I'm pointed at a public Prisma cluster, um, and also my Prisma.yaml, I'm pointed at this. And those are only for development. You cannot, you don't want to use these in production. And if you're deploying this to Heroku, I assume you're going to want to use this in production. So you don't want to be using these. These are just for um, testing like uh, I'm doing right here. Um, and so ideally, you want to deploy your own version of this uh, Prisma cluster, which we can do uh, with Docker. So. All the examples, though, are using Docker Compose to start up the uh, uh, Docker or the Prisma server. And for whatever reason, uh, with Heroku, you can only use Docker files. So there's no Docker Compose that you can do, just Docker file. 
So theoretically, you should be able to get the Prisma server running um, because the Prisma server is a Docker file um, or a Docker image. Um, so you just have to take that image and somehow put it into a Docker file and then uh, pass all the environment variables that you need to pass to it. Um, which I couldn't really figure out how to exactly get them all set up, at least with the constraints of how Heroku works. Um, the other part is the database, which is actually pretty easy to get around. Um, Heroku doesn't want you starting up um, databases in the uh, basically their app instances. So what you do is Heroku has these things called add-ons, um, and so you would use a Heroku add-on um, instead. I don't know if they have. Yeah, so there's these add-on things that you can use. Um, and you can see here all the services, and if we were to search this, we could see Postgres. I guess there's not Postgres. Um, there's a MySQL though. Um, I'm sure there's something for Postgres as well. Basically, you use one of these add-ons, um, which is basically a managed version of the database, and you connect to that. Um, so really, the only part of the puzzle I don't really know how to do is this part with uh, starting up the Prisma server. Um, and putting in a Docker file and pushing that up to Heroku. Um, hopefully there'll be more documentation in the future with this, with Prisma on how to do this. It's probably possible right now, I just don't know how. Um, so in this case you could just like deploy this into DigitalOcean or any other place, but then at that point um, if you're going to go through that there's really no reason to uh, you know use Heroku then too. Uh, but you did see how easy it was me for me to deploy something to Heroku compared to DigitalOcean. Um, Heroku literally took three steps uh, to push this up. So if you know how, it's very simple. Um, and as it composed, as uh, compared to DigitalOcean, where we had to set up Nginx, PM2, and then all that stuff, SSH into the server, this is much implied and much faster, and it handles all that and the uptime and all that. So that's nice. Uh, so it is a trade-off between them, uh, which you choose for hosting. But yep, that's it for this video, guys. Maybe you, some of you know how to actually um, set this up with Heroku. If you do, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to know.